website. So if this is something um, you would prefer us not to do, then um, of course, please let me know. And of course we won't. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, virtual career chat. We're absolute pros at these at these now, having done done them for I think a, a year now. Yes, it will be a year. So uh, we are a pro. We are pros at these today. Uh, fantastic. We have another health and safety one um, with our alliance partners Clancy and Keir. Um, they're going to share their inspirational journeys and a day in the life of. Um, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to just say sit back and enjoy and I'm going to hand over to the CEO Angela Forbes. Over to you. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, as Caroline said, our I think our 25th virtual career chat. So it's a pleasure to welcome you all back. I hope you're safe and well and and immunised. So I've got my first vaccine next week, which I'm looking forward to. So as well as the great audience here this morning, we've got some incredible speakers. So our chat this morning, as Caroline said, is centred around health and safety. So we'll hear from veterans from the Clancy Group and Keir. So we have Colin Willows of the Clancy Group joined by Philippa Butson, the resourcing manager. And then we'll hear from Stephen Harrod of Keir and Kim Thompson, the recruitment diversity manager. So four great speakers this morning and we'll be able to ask questions at the end of it all. So without further ado, I will pass over to Colin to get us started this morning and we'll all switch our cameras off. OK, thank Hi, you. Hi Colin, I can hear thank you. Thank you for that forward. Yeah, let me just get that. Just share my screen. <clears throat> can I be, can, have you seen my screen yet? No. Uh, there we go. Not yet. Seconds. Just give it a second. Just playing around here. Oh. That's okay. It's thinking about it, Colin. It's coming on. There we go. Wonderful. Yeah, Stephen mentioned yesterday he had a PowerPoint, death by PowerPoint. <laughs> I was going to do it verbally in true military fashion. Uh, I thought I'd best get my act together late last night and this morning I just uh, finished prepping it. So this is a reflective uh, account on health and safety from myself, Colin Willows. Uh, what I would say is my thoughts uh, in safety, we talk about reactive monitoring, looking back at things that have gone wrong and then proactively putting things in place. No different to the military. We've learned from campaigns in the past where we got things wrong and then we put them right for the future. Hence why uh, we've got the best armed forces in the world. So looking at that, my journey, there's me, uh, 1983, uh, young sapper, young military engineer, uh, joined the British Army. And in 2011, uh, having a good healthy 29 years, I decided to take voluntary redundancy, look for new opportunities. Uh, the knees were playing up. Uh, I was just getting too old for the game. And I've been out, as you could work out now, 10 years and currently work for the Clancy Group as a chartered health and safety, primarily a technical trainer and assessor, assessing the competency of our brilliant workforce and providing good consultation on regulation, legislation, policy and procedure. OK. So Clancy Group, I know Philip probably mentioned a little bit earlier, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, Multidiscipline, you can see the energy in the centre there. That's where we work, where I work, looking at uh, power infrastructure. Basically, if it wasn't for us, then we wouldn't be having the session. We keep the lights on. Uh, building new electrical substations, 132,000 kilovolts vol right down into your homes. Really exciting part of the construction industry. So, come on. what do I already know? What do I know about most people in this call? You've already got a strong, strong building foundation. Uh, I realise that now reactively. You're, you've been built upon what we call the arm ethos, instilled in you at a young age. Uh, so you go over the top and fight, and that's all about built upon loyalty, integrity, selfless commitment, uh, disciplined, courage, all that good stuff. No surprises then, really, that uh, we can start looking at those uh, competencies and values and start balancing them ready for a potential health and safety role in the industry. So the best way of explaining it in true trainer fashion would be look at a set of scales. There's you on the left, a veteran, 
you might be at the moment or leaving in the next six months, year or two. And I would say on the balance of things, you're probably pretty much there in terms of uh, values and certain types of competencies. So looking at the health and safety role, what I've tried to do is highlight where I believe those transferable skills may lie on any kind of job spec for a health and safety advisor. So outlining safe operational procedures which identify and take into account all relevant hazards. You've all done that. You've been in operations. Uh, you follow procedures, very regimental. It's no different in the industry. That's why I quite like construction. It's very policy process driven that need good people with deep rooted values uh, to get the job done. OK, ensure working practices are safe. You've all done that. Uh, you've been on a range day. You've been on live operations, keeping your body safe left and right, complying with your SOPs, policy and procedure. Leading in-house training. I love doing that. Building session plans on the back of something maybe that went wrong uh, to improve competency in the workforce. Again, I'd imagine many people in this call have done range day planning, exercise planning, engineer task planning, identifying safety issues and risks. Another one, producing management reports, uh, database experience. I assume everybody has DII uh, still in the military, so you've got an electronic login. There's many databases out here, so don't be frightened about what systems people are using. Get in there, adapt, overcome, be flexible with it, and you'll soon get on board, okay? You'll be uh, investigating accidents, and building reports on those databases. So don't let that hold you back or worry you. Excellent written and spoken communication skills. Got to be key in the health and safety world. Uh, you're going to be processing a range of information, giving presentations on this format. Could be a stand-up toolbox talk on site or a more formal uh, uh, training package. Negotiating skills. I think that's a real key one that we look for. Uh, convincing managers for the need to implement a certain piece of equipment or uh, a process that you believe uh, could make things uh, safer for people in the workplace. And that's maintaining ultimately the safety standards under the Health and Safety Work Act and all the vast range of regulation. Patience, this is one I struggle with and you might find that high tempo in the military, training for war fighting operations. Out here, I've learned to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more diplomatic, listen to people more carefully, particularly in the health and safety role. Use your skills where you collaboratively bring different people together. You'll be well versed in it. Uh, friendly forces, you had to collaborate in the battlefield with people that weren't friends, but you got them on board to get to a, a successful solution. So collaborative approach is a key thing for your CV. Demonstrate something there that you've done in the past. Ability to understand and analyze complex information, but simply get it down on paper, come up with a plan and accurately sell it to your the board, the health and safety board, managers or supervisors. Physical fitness. Yeah, well, I've let myself go a bit, but I can still probably do a couple of miles on a good day. Uh, you need to be fit for the role. You're going to be in your feet all day. In the military, uh, you had lightweight type boots. These ones have got steel toe caps, and you're on them all day from site to site, potentially doing a bit of training, a bit of advising, accident investigation. It can get tiring. You've got to look after your own well-being, which you'll be good at. Okay. And finally, I've left this one to last, lead by example. Okay, leading by example sends strong signals on how others should behave. And that's a real key component now. And for you new coming into it, if you've not heard of ISO 45001, the ISO Health and Safety Standard, uh, there's a big, big emphasis now on meaningful conversations with people on site. Okay, looking at their behaviors, trying to make them flip the corner, turn the corner, so they work safer. So I just thought I'd sign, signpost people there, get your CPD going already. Uh, you can see in the red, background reading, get yourself stuck into health and safety guidance note 48, behavioral safety. 
Uh, that'll keep you awake uh, quite a few hours and evenings, and it'll start to develop your knowledge. OK, moving on. So in Clancy, we've got our own values, the Clancy way. It's our goals, how we work safely. And there's our icons. I'm not going to spend too much time in these. I've only got 10 minutes-ish. So we are ambitious. You were ambitious in your military careers. Look at some key words in there. We are enthusiastic. We want to push boundaries. We want to reimagine the delivery of the infrastructure context contextualization. We hire and support exceptional people. You are exceptional people by virtue of the fact you've signed into this today to, to network and learn. You're thinking outside the box. Look at our company. They want you to progress a career, fulfill your potential and think positively about the future. Start thinking if you haven't done about a development plan. That's my last slide on this little session. OK, next one. We're innovative. We think outside the box. We don't follow their utility or construction companies. A bit like the military, I love that little bit. We like to be fast and we like to be first. I always remember the old sapper uh, move, fight and win and then reorg and start again. It's a bit like that. Be fast. Be first, get in there, look for improvements. Something I did that went up for an award, I was shortlisted a couple of years ago. I didn't get it, it doesn't matter because we've actually deployed this bit of kit now on the back of my military experience was the need for a, a major bleeding trauma pack, which I learned in the military. So I teach that out now to our guys and the unlikely and very rare chance that they were to cut themselves badly with a petrol cut off saw or an angle grinder our guys in the Alliance and Clancy uh, in the energy are trained to apply dry packing, field dressings and tourniquets, things that I learned at a young age. We've got that in, in, in our company now, which I think is great. It empowers people, uh, demonstrates that we care about people and uh, ultimately we can save a life. We're easy to do business with. OK, as a health and safety person, uh, you need to listen. It says listen to our clients. That's about you as well. Listening to people on the ground. OK, listening skills is a key one to get right. My wife says I don't listen. Yeah, I do listen. I, I take her to Ikea when she asks. Keep her happy. But listening skills is a key one to work upon. And you need to be able to make quick decisions when it matters. Something in sight might be red, might be high risk. You see it do something about it. Don't alarm people, but get them made into a safe area quickly. And that's where that military training will come in. OK, you've done it time and time again. And it's a skill I think you can transfer across quite easy. That sensible intervention. We do what we say. Look at the key word there, integrity. One of the British Army's uh, values. OK, uh, integrity, not cutting corners. If things aren't right on site, you, you keep your reputation, your integrity, you stop the work, you review it, reassess it, rebrief it out and start again safely. And then finally, we care. We care about people, uh, health and safety at work act, health, mental health, uh, looking after people, be careful how we treat people, treat them with respect and fairness. OK, and we do that across all of our stakeholders and all of our people in the company. OK. So moving on swiftly, Bill Force. Uh, that's why I'm here today. I actually started with Bill Force. Caroline will probably confirm it when I was with Murphy Group, John Murphy and Sons back in, must have been about 2016, I think, 17. Then when I came to, sorry, Caroline, 17, was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I then, uh, myself and Paul Banyard, who actually hired me. You can see Paul there to my left. That was our first networking uh, session in London. And we were overwhelmed by the people we met, really uh, demonstrating all those values, the ambitious, uh, what they wanted to achieve. They were ahead of the game and uh, it was a great session. And we've continued in that vein to, to help Caroline and the programme to look at things like uh, networking events. We try and get along to as many of them as we can. Hopefully with COVID now we can get to more. Work placements, giving people a try before you buy sort of sketch. Give people the opportunity to come in, have a look at what we do. I've, I've arranged quite a few of those in the past. Uh, potentially that can lead to an interview and potentially an offer. That would be great. An opportunity is there on the table. 
And we had one such guy. We've had a few, actually. This chap here is Andy Armstrong. He is uh, airborne X7 RHA artillery. We won't say too much more about the drop shorts. However, uh, good man. And I'm his mentor. I don't have to mentor him much, I'll be honest with you. It's just great to bump into him when I see him when he comes in off the field for a coffee, have a catch up, find out what's happening on site, and then I update training. And then we've got that full circle of safe compliance. Uh, don't have to give him a date deal of coaching. He's doing a lot of the coaching and mentoring on site now. And we develop him. Andy, we took on in January 20. And he's now on his uh, MVQ level six, occupational health and safety, MVQ. So he's technical IELTS at the moment. He's following that professional body. And not only is Andy a success in himself, but believe it or not, in that short space of time, he was voted by the people on the ground, not by the directors, but the guys he works with as our energy zero harm safety champion 2021. So if anybody's on this call now looking for a bit of hope, there you go. It's out there on a plate. So Andy's now going to move on uh, to the corporate, to Clancy Group with Matt Cannon, the CEO, all the directors down there, and potentially become the overall group safety champion 2021. That'd be a great uh, achievement for Andy, for us in the energy, and for the wider Clancy Group. Okay, nearly done. Uh, signposting. When I left the military in 2011, 12, I was a little bit confused. A couple of years, I uh, jumped from facility management. I was a school business manager. Uh, got, and then I got into health and safety. I, I felt like, you know, military engineer background. doesn't matter what, what, what part of the mob you come from, but if you've got that military kind of core values, you might look at something like an advisor job. Uh, what I'm doing now, I do advising, but I do training and assessing. I really enjoy that health and safety training. Uh, you might become more of an auditor, consultant. You might like following uh, audited programs, checking against policy and procedure. And eventually with time, you might decide, you know what, I like looking after my small teams. I might want to be a manager. Uh, personally for me, I like looking after myself and I like getting the guys and girls in the classroom and having a good training session and then checking it back out on site where we do a bit of quality assurance on them, making sure any gaps that they didn't quite meet in the classroom, we can fill out on site. Okay, so somebody signposted me to this organization, IOSH, you may have heard of them, Institution of Occupational Safety and Health. I looked at that and I ended up paying at that time about £120 for the year to give me full access to uh, become an affiliate, uh, a member. Full access to the forums, people on there with a vast experience to help me on my journey. It's not a legal requirement, but from me to you, I would recommend you do it, okay, because uh, they too have a set of values, integrity, competence, respect, and service. And, you, and I have to, anybody who wears the IOSH badge has to live up to those values on a daily basis. And it keeps me on the straight and narrow and reminds me of where I come from back in 1983. It really helps me uh, with those standards. You might like that idea. Get a development plan together. I put my development plan together on IOSH when I got my technical IOSH status. And from 2014 to 19, funnily enough, five years, uh, in 19, I was awarded chartered status uh, in IOSH. Uh, I just wanted to get there. You know, I'm stood up in front of people teaching, show that I'm at the top of my game in the eyes of IOSH. It's quantifiable, and I have to live by that code of conduct. So... There you go. I'd advise a five year plan. If you haven't done it already, start thinking about it now. How can I help you with that? Let's have a look. Build upon your strong foundation. Underpin values you got. Please don't underestimate them, guys. There are bright light out there. there are recruitment agencies, companies that like us looking for good leadership and management skills, communication skill. Teamwork is so important. Loyalty and integrity goes without saying. So don't underestimate them, bring them to the forefront. And they'll naturally come out, I assume, when you have your interview. Build upon things. What do I mean? Build upon your CV. Transfer those skills across with the help of Caroline and her team. 
Think of training courses, health and safety, level three and above is ideal. Join a networking group such as IOSH, Barber, SHP, there's lots of them out there. And look at work placements, they're really good to get a good feel for what's out in industry. And then finally, just like the little pictogram there, you're not on your own. You've got the build force, you've got me, you've got Stephen on here. Uh, we're always on the end of a phone or an email to help people. So get that development plan going. If you join IOSH, there's a lot of uh, uh, templates on there for you to follow. Carry out a simple SWOT analysis of yourself. Look at your strengths and weaknesses. Look at opportunities for build force. Get yourself into the placements. Give yourself a realistic timeline. Use the mentors within build force. That's what we're here for, to give something back. And just remember, if you listen to old Bojo on the news, uh, you can see it already. Uh, industry's picking up. We reckon by the end of the year from 5% to 7.5. That's amazing. So there are opportunities ahead. So get ahead of the pack. My advice, and to summarise, last slide, get in the Health and Safety Executive website. Build your knowledge up. I mentioned one document at the beginning. I was going to test you there, see if you remembered. HSG 48, Behavioural Safety. Do the leadership and worker diagnostic toolkit on the HSE website. You can see it there, the seven steps. It will really help you understand where strengths and weaknesses can be in the role as a safety manager, advisor, assessor or trainer. And finally, thanks for listening. And good luck in whatever you decide to do. And thanks to Caroline and Angela for the opportunity to speak this morning. Thank you very much. Colin, that was, Colin, fantastic. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank can, you. I ask, can I ask Philippa to join us? Are you able to take your screen down? Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking uh, screen share. Thank you. Just try to get rid of it. No. I, d I normally use Zoom, you see. I don't use uh, Teams so much. I should have done a bit more prep. Uh, is that gone? Is that gone now? That's it. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Smashing. Okay, I'll just mute. Right. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? We can. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, lovely. And you can see the screen. Okay. Yes. Lovely. Right. I'm just going to do that from. So I'm not going to go through my entire. Uh, PowerPoint slides here because that was brilliant from Colin. So thank you. Um, oh, is that work? There we go. Now we're working. <laughs> so yeah, my name's Philippa Batson. I work um, with Colin at Clancy. My role is the resourcing manager for the group. Um, so what I want to do is just give a little bit of extra information about about the business. Um, so obviously, following on from what Colin said, what I wanted to do was just share with you about you know where we came from really um because it is actually quite a an interesting story so we're a 63 year old business um we're one of the largest family owned construction businesses in the uk our founder was a guy called michael j clancy and he uh, he came to the uk from ireland back in 1958 with a view to making life better for his family um so didn't really have much with him other than his, his wife his kids and some tools got to work laying mains in London and then sort of soon realised that there was a uh, a gap in the market shall we say to become a contractor and basically be the person in the middle rather than digging the holes laying the mains but organising others to do that work so fast forward 63 years um, and here we are um, we are we've moved from that family on the left it has substantially grown we've gone from being a um, most recently a second generation run business by siblings to being a third generation run by the cousins um so that gives you a bit of an idea of the uh, of the history and and who we are so where we are today is we well have revenues in excess of 300 million 2,200 direct employees and an order book over the next five years of over 2 billion. So we've come a long way in those those 63 years. We're not doing bad for a family owned business. Um, and just here, I've just sort of shared with you some of the logos of some of the businesses that, that we work with most regularly. You can see there that we've got quite a heavy presence in, in water, but then we've also got power, which is where Colin works over in UK Power Network. 
Um, on this slide as well, what I've got is I've just sort of shared with you where we are location wise. You can see sort of very heavily in that sort of southeast and over in the uh, in the Anglian region. That's probably where we are busiest and most often seen to be recruiting. So to give you a bit of an idea of some of the scale of what we do um, is last year or in the last 12 months, we've installed 115,000 water meters. We set up 28,000 traffic management sites. We've repaired 87,000 leaks. We've connected 11,000 properties. Um, it, it, the list goes on. So you can see why um, with so much going on and actually operating in quite a, a, a dangerous space. You know, when we're digging holes, there's there's assets underground. We can hit a gas pipe. We can hit all sorts and cause all sorts of issues. Health and safety is absolutely the backbone of our business, without question. Um, so that just gives you a bit of an idea of, of the scale of, of what we get involved with. So our mission is to make life better for everyone's growing families. Um, what I like about Clancy is that we're kind of we're big enough and we operate in a really professional way, but we've still got a lot of agility. We're small enough to be able to make quick decisions um, and, and, and do the right thing. And, and I really, really personally appreciate that. Our goal is not higher revenues, but it is about profit that we can reinvest back in the business for the long term support of those families that come in all different shapes and sizes these days. Um, our vision is to be trusted to deliver smarter, greener infrastructure brilliantly. Um, obviously, I know I'll quickly run through these because uh, Colin did such a great job a moment ago. Um, but our objectives are about harnessing greener technology. That's really important. You know, at the moment, something that we're looking at at the moment is about how we can transfer, you know, to a, a completely electric fleet, including our plant reimagining how we do things to make sure that our workers are protected about being smart investors not in, you know not borrowing from the banks and about being an employer of choice as well so we've got roles our industry is rapidly changing it's innovating at, at such a pace um what i would say you know there's a I, there's a lot of doom and gloom about opportunities that are available. Not just Clancy, but the rest of the utility sector um, and construction sector, we are absolutely um, growing at a rapid pace that, you know, whatever happens, we need to keep the lights on and we need to keep water running. So we're in a really good place at the moment. So I would definitely, even if you're not looking at Clancy, definitely look at utilities as an option for you. It, it is really, really going somewhere. Um, we've got lots of roles. We do have some roles for health and safety advisors at the moment, operation supervisors as well, where there's also a real strong um, bias towards health and safety. Um, but yeah, we've got all sorts um, going on there. Um, and then in terms of just why work for Clancy, but, you know, why even look at us? I, I think, you know, we've got a lot to offer. We, um, Colin mentioned earlier about that we've, over the years that we've taken a number of people from the forces. Currently, I think at last count back in March, we've got out of those 2,200, 50 of those employees have got a forces background, many of which in that health and safety space, some in different spaces. Um, and, and, and we look after people, um, you know, people are our, our greatest asset. So yeah, that's pretty much what I would I would finish with. Um, so yeah, Nick, when you're out there looking for a job with all the advice that Colin's given, definitely look us up. That's a little uh, squiggly thing that takes you to our website where all the roles are. Have a good look, see what you think, find out a bit more about us. Um, and then that's my email address on there as well. As well as Colin's, you've got my email address. If you've got questions, please do get in touch. And that's it for me. Philippa, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and I've got a few questions I've noted down for you, so we'll get to them at the end. Is um, if I can ask Stephen from Keir if he's able to join us? 
Yep, I'm with you, Angela. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Would you like me to uh, crack on with my presentation? Please, yeah, that'd be great. I'll just like Colin fiddle around with the IT to ensure that. Can we all see that? Yeah. That's it. it. Yeah. Uh, disappeared my end now. Can you still hear me? I can, yeah. Okay, I've lost my screen here, so uh, apologies. Oh, back with you. Sorry, it's me. Um, I can't see my screen now, so I do apologise. Not going particularly well here. With uh, that's a screen change for you guys. It's not. We can see um, the presentation. Um, as long as you can see it. Mm, yeah, well, let me get rid of it now. Just bear with me. I, I can't see the screen, so uh, I'll just have to, like in good military fashion, cut this. If I <laughs> press um, the next button, can you, is the screen changed at all? Um, it hasn't, no, we're still on your first slide. Okay, I'll stop sharing. And what I'll do is I'll bring it back up again, if that's okay. Let's start again. That's it. Just bear with me. I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen. Good. All good. Can you see the screen now? Yes. I'm back yes, in the room. That's it. So I do apologise. Uh, my name's Stephen Harrod and uh, kindly been asked by Bill Ford to give a short presentation about my role from a soldier to a health and safety professional. Uh, and I just want to build on the uh, excellent presentation from, from Colin. Thank you very much. And I'll probably echo a lot of his points. So without further ado, that's who I am, who I was many years ago in the early 80s, like Colin, I joined. Um, ended up uh, for a number of different jobs, finishing off at the age of tender age of 50 in June 2015. So like Colin, I was a late entry officer, started at the bottom, worked my way up. So I've had a number of jobs and those that are attending this meeting, I've probably done every one of the jobs you're more or less uh, going through. So I do have a bit of experience, a bit of understanding. And where I ended up is not where I thought I was going to end up, but I can give you my little journey to give you confidence on how you can achieve what you want to achieve. Now, I joined Kia in 2015 from, from leaving the military after a long career. I don't really know how I ended up there. Um, the company gave me an opportunity, and this is a, a true story. I was just finished resettlement training, and I decided to put my CV to a company called Billforce that's currently hosting this. And they put my CV out to a number of different people who I was unaware of at the time. And I got a phone call out the blue from a chap. He said, my name's Mark. I work for Kia. And straight away, I, I said, that I really, really sorry. I know nothing about cars. So it, it didn't really start too well from that point. But he said, no, 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 it's, it's a construction company. Health, you know, and we're looking for health and safety people. So I quickly backtracked and learned to, to do my homework. The company, um, excellent company, like Clancy. It's uh, a big, big company, probably about 22,000 plus in a number of different areas, and that includes the area uh, Colin works in. I particularly am involved in the construction part, and as you can read there, uh, across the country, over 180 projects, and it can be from small works all the way up to massive, massive amount of money, 200 million pound projects with a thousand plus people on a building site. So it can be quite challenging, but, but very enjoyable. I work specifically for Kia Construction London and South East. My role currently is a health and safety uh, advisor, stroke manager, and I look after a number of our role uh, jobs, sorry, within the M25 circle, 
probably a good way of explaining it. The company itself within construction, the Kia construction, is all the way across the country. And Kim at the end will explain a bit more about further opportunities. So that's just to give you an idea. So my transition. Quite daunting, like Colin, spent a number of years in the military. You get indoctrinated uh, and you don't realise how good the training that you've gone through, going through, is until you actually leave. You've got a very, very good template. What were my skills? Now, as I started off as a soldier, coaching guards, worked my way through, finished up in the small arms school corps as an instructor, weapons, ammunition type person. So not really linked to construction at all. Um, but I identified a need in the market and I looked at what I had, as you can see on the screen there. The managing risk part, no matter where you are on your journey through the military, you manage people, you manage risk by doing what you do day in, day out. And for some of the more senior ones amongst you, you probably do things like accident investigation and just looking back and learning from, from what you've done. They are, for all intents and purposes, a good health and safety type skill that you can take forward. Uh, trainer and manager, as you go up through the ranks, you are put in front of people, whether you like it or not. When you explain stuff, you give orders, you talk to people, you give presentations. The further up you go, you speak to audiences and you might even end up training recruits, soldiers, officers. So by that, you are a trainer manager. And, and don't forget that. That's a brilliant skill to have and to take forward, which, which Colin emphasised as well. We are, we were very good at what we did. And I didn't realise how good we were until you make that transition and work in what, well, you know, Civvy Street, if you wish to call it that. There are some fantastic people. There's people that are 10 times better than I ever will be in my, in my new roles and the people that I work with. But as a template, what you've taught, what you know, what you've been doing, you are very, very good at. And that's something really that you should sell when you go forward looking for future employment, and especially when you get to the interview stage. Don't be afraid to sell what you do. Resettlement training. I was not a sapper like young Colin there, um, Royal Engineer. We in the construction industry, veterans found, I've seen there's a number of uh, veterans that are mainly from the Royal Engineer background. So I've sort of give you confidence for the, for the infantrymen or non-engineers. If you do wish to go into sort of the construction area, there are gaps there, uh, especially in the health and safety role. You can learn new stuff, and I'll dwell on that a bit later. Never stop learning because it keeps your interest, it keeps your drive and determination that you've got from many, many years in, um, in, the, in the military. That's what it gives us. So don't be afraid to use it and don't be afraid really to stop learning. Why did I choose construction? Well, I attended a couple of resettlement fairs, as you do, and had a look around with the before the government restrictions. Uh, attended these fairs and looked at opportunities and I found that the construction industry was, was kicking off and I thought well I haven't really got any skills I could take into construction. So I attended a uh, meeting uh, presentation by a company called Persimmon Homes who build homes houses that you, you may have heard of and I sat down with their chap and he was an ex-military guy giving the presentation and he gave me good insight into getting the correct qualifications and getting health and safety competencies because we're pretty good within the military of ploughing through getting on with our career but when it comes to leaving you, it looks good on a bit of paper but you find it difficult sometimes to get the qualifications to demonstrate that you do have that competency so please when you are going through with someone you are interested in construction and health and safety Get the basics, get the NEBOSH qualification, health and safety competency, get the NEBOSH construction if that's what you want to go into. Look at that and that give you a big opportunity uh, on your CV and make your notice. 
continuing with the transition, what qualifications? I've mentioned a few of them there. I spent 20 years teaching before I finished off. Uh, but a couple of years before I left the military, I realised I, I can do it. But actually, how can I demonstrate to future employees? And the diploma in uh, teaching the lifelong learning sector, I managed to do as part of my resettlement training. And it took me about a year to do, but I did it on the job. I was finished off at Harrogate and um, did 12 months doing this course, which was good. Gave me the opportunity. One thing I also wish to emphasise, what I did do when I left, is join the Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, which Colin uh, raised. It's a very important institute for health and safety. It gives you a grounding, it gives you CPD information, it gives you the networking ability. They're all different categories. I'm not going to bore you with them now. You start uh, at the bottom, like we all did. Uh, you pay a little bit of money, and there's different levels that you're working way up to. Uh, like Colin, I've, I've managed to get to the Chartered Management of Institute of uh, Occupational Safety and Health, which I'm very proud of as Colin is. It's a journey, but we're all very capable of doing it. Now, the journey doesn't necessarily, well, it does start on a bit of paper when, when you join, but actually your years of experience that you've got does count for a hell of a lot, and you've probably been doing a lot of safety and health stuff throughout your military careers that you don't know about. But when you sit down and think about it and you start going through the MVQs, you can actually transfer a lot of the information that they are asking for what you've already done. So that's a good thing also to have on your CV. And, and uh, I highly, like Colin, highly recommend that. So what's it like in the health and safety business uh, within construction well good challenges i'd like to highlight what colin said really the template that you've got with all the um training experience skill knowledge be proud to use it you've got a very very good template that a lot of employees are looking for so please 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 stick with what you've learned Stick with what you know and take that in into whatever you want to do. Yes, I've got a new uniform, as Colin has. We have uh, boots. We have high-vis vests. We have hats, safety glasses, gloves, um, depending on, on what you're doing. Be proud to wear the new one. You've worn one for the last X amount of years, uh, proudly. What I can emphasize is be proud of the next one you go into as well. Don't forget your roots. Don't forget the template you have. And one of my mantras to myself is always be the best you can be. Give it 110%. Even though some of you around, the people around you may not be doing that. Um, and as Colin sort of alluded to, the, 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 the patient side of it, the diplomacy side of it, and the people management that you've got will we'll come to the fore because there are some challenges out there with the people that are in the business, the same same as anyone. There's some excellent people and there's some people that need help and there's some people that um, rely on a bit of guidance. You guys will have that in abundance. So my role, uh, currently health and safety advisor, stroke manager. How did I get into that? I looked at my transferable skills. I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity with a tier one construction building company, Kia. They took a chance on me. I hadn't worked in construction before, but I had all the construction competencies. So I offered to work with them on a placement for a few months. And after that, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to uh, be offered a job. So don't be afraid, as Colin alluded to, to actually go for a placement and be the best you can be. We are looking all the time for people with the template that you guys and girls have got. Part of my role is I conduct inspection against a, a company audit report. So you go onto a building site, uh, I have an audit report, and you look and you mark against. It sounds quite black and white, but it's actually not. It's, 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 it's quite challenging. And, I, and I'll give you an example there. Uh, on the slide, that was uh, when I first um, started with Kia, try to improve basics. 
Now, look at that. That's just a few people working in a hole, working around. Colin will see straight away there's a number of issues there. But if you look at some of the people that you're working with, they're not nine young recruits that sort of sit up and listen to you because you've got rank. You have to influence people. You have to challenge. You also have to um, advise and, and give guidance to get them to be they can best to be. So that is one of the challenges I face every day. It's not like that, I can assure you, but that was what I first started with. And you end up trying to improve sites, walk around, so you get some sort of structure. That's one of our projects, that picture I took a couple of weeks ago, that's a £105 million project in the, in the centre of Mayfair, surrounded by Waitrose, Catholic, um, it's a posh Catholic school at the bottom there, and high residential areas, all looking in amongst this building site. And I am responsible for managing the health and safety uh, and environmental issues on that site. So you are a little bit under the microscope to a certain extent, but you guys, if you choose to go into this, are more than capable of helping the people that are building that along their journey. Fantastic opportunities, fantastic challenges every single day. And that's one of the reasons why I got into that. Let's not forget also, I've put up there the, the, the COVID um control measures that each and every one of us have to, to follow whether it be through legislation and uh, government legislation or whether it be compliance within the construction leadership council's direction or our own company direction health safety health and environment it is why so health is a big part of that so the challenges have been there over the 12 last 12 months to keep everybody as safe as they can possibly be 75% of the workforce that I um, work with, visit, are from a different country. So they're getting them to comply. The language barrier, it's a great challenge. It's a great challenge. And it's uh, a very worthwhile job opportunity as a health and safety part of it. But it has been good. It has been good, challenging, and uh, day in, day out, as I'm sure Colin will think. I look after currently nine construction sites within the M25 circle looking after single story up to massive 105 million pound projects i write inspection reports of what i see won't bore you too much on that but uh, the military gives you a good base to be able to do joined up writing be able to put that into it and your it skills will, will come to the, the forefront i'm sure when uh, whatever company you choose to work for advisor people management behavioural change, getting people to do the right thing on a difficult day. They're all skills that, that you guys have and be able to, to bring into your new employment. And don't be afraid to use them. I use them day in, day out. Yes, you've got the armour of screaming and shouting, but that's really not 21st learning now. It's how to influence people, how to get them to change, change the culture, be part of a positive culture. And that's what I enjoy. In addition, like Colin, you do a number of different things as a, as a previous instructor. Um, I deliver training myself. I'm also a mental health first aider and a mental health first aid instructor. I teach the courses. I like doing the wellbeing stuff. Uh, continuous professional development, it never ends. Legislation always changes, as you've probably read in the, the papers with the fire stuff going on. Uh, that's all coming into construction, so we never stop learning. Uh, and meetings, bear in mind, with what's going on. A lot of them now are Microsoft Teams, but we are getting um, probably next year back to, to being in the boardroom and, and doing other meetings as well. He's standing up, talking in front of people, imparting knowledge and, and getting them to be the best they can be. So that that's my role. A little few little tips before I finish off. Uh, Colin alluded to it. Your CV, get it looked at. Be very conscious of, of military jargon. Through Build Force, I get a few CVs sent to me and I sometimes phone people up and give them a little bit of guidance on ensuring that they know what they mean. But when you try and look at it from a, a civilian perspective, they might not understand. So just, just be conscious of what your CV contains and, and tailor it to the role. You might have to have three or four, not insulting anyone's intelligence, I'm sure you know that, but I do see the bland ones come through that don't do anyone any favours. So do your homework. Make sure you do know what you want to do uh, and do a bit of CPD yourself. 
Colin mentioned the HSG 48, the IOSH website. Just just keep up to date what's going on. And if you and if you, I'm sure you will fortunate enough to get an interview, then then make sure you throw the odd comments in. Be current. Yeah, look at the future. That's what employees um, are looking for. And use your past training skills and experience in, in all that you do. You guys have got a lot, a lot of lot to offer. Um, you've got a lot of skills that, that the business is looking for. And I do hope you get the, the opportunity. Finishing off, try, if you wish to get into construction, health and safety, you must sort of have the NEBOSH construction health and safety certificate. Uh, it's about a month's course. It can be done part of, or three weeks, I think it is now, part of the resettlement course online. That's a good one to get. That will give you um, the door ajar for, for potential interview. Tailor your CV to your role, whatever you're going for. Be patient. Don't lose faith, as, as Colin alluded to. There's going to be a journey, ups and downs, and I don't envy you guys currently with the um, government restrictions going on, not being able to meet people, shake people's hands, look people, don't allow them to look at your body language. It's all done by teams. So very difficult, but we are coming out of it. Um, but please be patient. Don't lose your faith. Excellent role, health and safety. You have a lot of transferable skills that you probably don't even know about that future employers will be looking for. So stick with it. Be strong. Never stop learning. Do a bit of CPD yourself. Every day is a learning day for me. And I can thoroughly recommend the role of health and safety professional, no matter what you choose to go in for, for any, any ex-military. You've got the skills uh, and knowledge to do that. So... Um, Good luck in, in, in what you do. That's me. Apologies, I've probably gone a, a, a couple of minutes over. But, um, Stephen, that was fantastic. Questions? No worries. Any questions, please um, save to the end and we'll come back to them. That's it. That's perfect. And could I ask um, Kim to join us as well? Thank you, Stephen. No worries. Hi, Kim. Bye. Hello. Right, let me just get my screen up and share that with you. Um, while that's loading up, I'll just quickly introduce myself. So my name is Kim Thompson and I am the Recruitment Diversity Manager for Keir Group. Um, I think Stephen's done an excellent job about introducing Keir and everything that we do. So I haven't done any of that bit. He's done all of that bit for me. Um, and I've literally just got this one slide that hopefully you can see on the screen now, um, which shows the current roles that we've got available at both Keir and um, within our EKFB joint venture, which is the HS2 project, we're doing quite a significant amount of work on HS2. Um, it's a really popular project. Um, lots of people, when we talk about it, that's the one they want to work on. That's the one they want to be involved in. Um, and we always have roles within EKFB as well, which are really, really positive. So on the screen, you can see the roles that we've got available. These are within our safety, health, environment and quality stream for the business. But they're not necessarily just in Stephen's area in construction. Some of these are within infrastructure, highways, utilities and care places. So, you know, we're a very diverse business. We've got a lot going on. Um, we're on some really significant projects um, and we're on some projects that are slightly smaller as well. So there's a huge amount of opportunity for people at care. Um, and that is my one and only slide. So I'm going to leave that up for you. So you've got a couple of minutes just to quickly look through and see if anything is of interest. And if you do look through that and you think location looks like something you're interested in, the job title looks like something you're interested in, um, please do get in touch with me and I can share the link with you to apply for that role and give you a little bit more detail about, about what that looks like. So I do appreciate that is obviously a very quick snapshot that you've got up on screen. So it doesn't tell you a huge amount of information. Um, but whilst I leave that up, I just wanted to take a minute just to talk you through kind of what care, what we are doing as a business to try and improve the support that we're giving to service leavers, veterans, reservists um, within our business. And I say try and improve because I think it's fair to say that we're certainly on a bit of a journey with it. And we are constantly trying to develop and improve our approach to what we do to support people within our business and especially those from an armed forces background. And I think it's you know realistic and fair to say that I don't think you're ever done striving for a fair platform for people so 
most recently what we're looking at is renewing our ERS gold award membership so that's something we're really really proud of and it shows our commitment and what we're doing to support members of the armed forces when they move into civilian roles with care and we're renewing that as I said we're fairly confident quietly confident that we'll get gold again um, so we're pretty optimistic that we're on the right track with that and as part of that we've looked at reviewing policies and relaunching policies around what we do to support people with an armed forces background um, and what we're doing as well in terms of bringing those groups together bringing that audience together so we've got um, a bit of a group that's very very new it only launched a few weeks ago um, and it's a bit of a community for people that have got an armed forces connection so it's not just veterans it's service leavers it's reservists it's um, people that have got a loved one in the forces um, so we've got a couple of um, mums on that group whose sons are in the army and we use that group as really just an opportunity for those people to network to meet each other to connect and share their own stories but also to feed into kind of our plans as a business and give us some first-hand insight into what we could and should be doing as a business to do more to support them um, and that's my group I lead that I look after that um, my role in as a recruitment diversity manager is really about supporting what we're doing as a business to be more inclusive and that absolutely includes people from an armed forces background and as Stephen said your transferable skills are second to none um, you know we've got the roles we've got the vacancies it's just about what we can do to support you to move into those in a way that's beneficial for both you and the business um, and my role is about looking at how we do that and what we can do more of to support that um, so that's all I really wanted to share with you today um, and from a recruitment perspective if any of those roles that are on screen do interest you and you'd like more information um, if you just let me know that that's something you're interested in doing, um, you can go via Caroline and the team or what I'll do if it's all right, Caroline, I'll put my email address in the chat so that people can pick it up from there um, and just message me with the role and the location that you're interested in finding more out about. And I'll be able to share the link with you to apply and for the job advert. So you've got a little bit more background detail on what that might look like. OK, Kim, that's from me. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and thanks for leaving that slide up there. That was fantastic. So that was really, really helpful. If I could ask all the speakers um, just to put their screens on um, and we'll open up the Q&A. If you do have a question, just please raise your hand or type it in the box. Um, meanwhile, I'll, I'll kick off with a, a few. So first one to, to call in. Um, during your transition, Colin, so as you were leaving the armed forces um, and thinking about what, career to pursue did health and safety feature heavily in that thought process was it one of the first thoughts or did you fall into it how did that happen uh, well strange enough Angela and I'm not suggesting anybody does this uh, I've got my prop here my missing finger uh, typical royal engineer accident uh, <laughs> Stephen's laughing but uh, you know as a in the military at the time I was managing the site for environment MOD site fire uh, health and safety risk assessments on engineer sites, such like. So it seemed a natural progression. And there's jungle drums in the military when you're leaving. You know, use your LCAS, do the MVQs or do an EBOSH course. I did exactly that. I did uh, general construction and fire. And, I, and it's a great, like Stephen alluded to, it's a great little foot in the door. And it, and it demonstrates your willingness to sacrifice not just the money, but your time and dedication, Angela, you know. So, yeah, I, I followed it all the way through in answer to your question. Is and just, a, yeah, it does. And that actually leads to another really good point. We, and it's to, to both you and Stephen, we often get a lot of candidates saying, I've got my, I'm going, I've got my enhanced learning credits here. Should I do the IOSH or the NEBOSH or the SMSTS course? Um, which one do Build Force recommend? What would your answer be to that? Stephen, you, do you want to say it or do you want me to just to quickly do a bit first? My advice on that, Angela, would be, uh, I would say courses like SMSTS, uh, I would probably wait till you got to the company uh, because that can be done in-house. You go for the bigger cherries in the tree. Get your uh, level three NEBOS certificates done because like I just said earlier, that's a good foot in the door, you know, to get in the door. I know out in industry, been out 10 years now, there's guys running sites, projects, in the wider industry who struggle to get the time now to balance the time to get that knee bosh and i'm sort of helping some of them now to uh, with coping mechanisms shall we say it's such a shame but 
the guys and girls coming out on your resettlement part, if you still do what was CTW in my time, career transition workshops, get that development plan started now and get that training done, you know, because it's you're going to build upon those bricks with the pictogram I showed earlier on and Stephen mentioned as well. Yeah, I would say from a, a, a resourcing manager point of view, seeing applications coming in, that's exactly for us. Like you say, the SMSTS and so on, that can be something that we can support with. Um, but the IOSH and the NEBOSH are much, um, yeah, there's a bigger nut to crack. So I'd say definitely um, that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking at, uh, I've got a health and safety role, all have they got. Because we get all the transferable skills and if you've got that, it just gives you that extra. So it shows that someone's taken the initiative to, to do that off their own back. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I would com completely concur with, uh, with Colin on that. Yeah. And just to, sorry. sorry to build on Angela, I spoke to my manager that employed me, made me the, the job offer, and asked him, apart from my natural charm, of course, why why he offered me the job, and he said the CV stuck out with the NEBOSH with the construction certificate and the general health and safety certification that I had, and also the IOSH because it demonstrates. As, as Colin alluded to, that you're going over and above, you are part of a professional health and safety body. And that talks a lot as well on, on a CV. So don't necessarily worry too much about experience because you, you, you don't always get that, but you do need those qualifications just to have that, to make a difference from the person that CVs next to you. So, so and it, it raises a good point. So if you've got the CV, if you've got a candidate that's um, been serving for 15, 20 years, that's had hints of a safety role throughout it, but not dedicated, um, how can you encourage a company to take a punt on them in a dedicated health and safety role? Does, does a work placement help? Um, uh, what else can you advise that, that candidate to do? Well, for us, um, and I suspect Kim has got something um, going on as well with Keir because we're both signed up to the Armed Forces Covenant. We're on that journey. We're a bit further behind Keir. We've just gone in for our, our silver status and there's things that we've had to do to commit to that. We're pretty confident it's going to come through. And one of those commitments is, is if somebody from the, the forces has got a transferable skill set, we will give them an interview. So I would say maybe look at those organisations that are signed up to the Armed Forces Covenant is a really good starting point because they already get it, they already understand it. So I think that would be quite a good a good starting point. It's not to say that other companies that, that aren't signed up to it won't do that as well, but I think, you know, if you're focusing your job search on certain businesses, that, that's a good starting point. Thanks, and Colin. <laughs> yeah, just one other thing on uh, preparing uh, for everybody on the call. A level three uh, adult education training course certificate. Uh, one thing I did with one of my credits was uh, like training, like Stephen, uh, quantify that into civilian speak. So it allowed me when I was a school business manager to uh, train all the teaching staff, support staff, the maintenance teams, fire extinguishers, manual handling, cost assessments, risk assessment, working at height, and then. I find in schools it just wasn't challenging enough for me, hence why I'm in construction now. I wanted that bigger challenge. Uh, and then the training, you know, I went, I worked for a safety company and the guy said, I'm getting some really good feedback, Colin, from the Forestry Commission. Actually, Angela, up at the uh, the Braes of Doon near Stirling in my hometown, I was training at Stirling University and got excellent feedback. And he said, do you mind if I make you biased 80% safety training and 20 on site? And that was in 2015-ish, and I've been more biased to training. I really enjoy it. So, you know, there's advisor roles, like I was saying, there's auditing, there's managing, there's training. It's a massive sandpit out there. The world's your oyster, really. you just got to go out and uh, speak to people on these platforms and find out what you want to do. Go for it. I would also just quickly add to that as well that, um, and Stephen kind of alluded to it, is around your CV and what that looks like when it comes over to an employer. So where you've got organisations like Buildforce that are able to support you with finding employment, that's absolutely perfect. But if you're applying for a role 
kind of with the rest of the groups that are also applying, think about the volumes of applications we get can be quite significant for some of these roles and where you've got health and safety experience, but it might be kind of scattered throughout your career. Think about how you can bring that to the forefront of your CV. So potentially instead of doing your CV in a chronological order, thinking about your most recent employment backwards, think about actually making it skills based and thinking about I'm applying for a health and safety role let's put all of my skills in health and safety at the top of my CV so when that recruiter is going through you know 30 or 40 applications the first thing they're seeing is those skills that relate to this role specifically um, instead of it necessarily being kind of the most recent thing you've done being your forces career and then a lot of information about that just think about how you might be able to readjust and move that around to make sure your skills are at the forefront not necessarily your most recent role. That's a good point, Kim. And we often say to the candidates, you've got an, an exec profile at the start of your CV, use it to tell your story. Just tell the employer exactly what it is you need them to know and, and why you're 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 good for the job. Um, just on one of the slides that you had shown, um, I think it was Philippa and, and you too, Kim, there was reference and hints to the quality, environmental and compliance role that sits within health and safety. So it was just to ask any of you, is that a key function of a health and safety role now? Does your employer upskill you in that space or could those areas be an entry route for somebody considering a, a career in safety? Interesting. It comes up less um, than your standard HR, HR, God, <laughs> HSE advisor. Um, yeah, in all honesty, it's not a role that I we have as much. It normally makes up part of the role. Um, it's quite often you'll see HSEQ. Um, so I would say absolutely. I think probably it's a role that we see less. It's probably one that Keir would probably have more because of the sheer scale of the business. Um, mm. Would have more going on there. So I don't know, Kim, if, what your thoughts are on that. Hi, yeah, so for us, it is one that's kind of relatively common. Um, not all parts of the business will recruit for that specific type of role, but some parts do. I think, again, it's, you know, we can give that support and development in a lot of these areas. And I think if you start within the kind of a health and safety advisory role with us, one of the benefits of kind of Kira and Clancy as well is the, the scope of the organisations. Clancy's, you know, a big organisation, Kira are, are slightly bigger, but there's that scope to develop and learn and move within the organization so you know you know Colin had a really interesting journey through his career as well Stephen's had but the type of roles that you might join in aren't necessarily going to be the type of role that you're doing in two or three years time and we'll develop and support that so if you join in health and safety advisory capacity um, and actually you learn a lot more about kind of the compliance side the quality side it's not necessarily going to be something that you are going to learn unless you're in the environment, unless you're in the industry and unless you're part of it and understanding exactly how that relates to construction and, and you know, specifically sometimes construction in the UK because it's very different based on where you are. Um, so we can develop and, and support you with those skills. You can join doing, you know, a health and safety advisory role and we can get you into those areas to become kind of compliance manager types. OK, so don't let the title deter any of the candidates. Just look at the job description. It will be more so health and safety biased. Um, Colin, you mentioned about you could still kind of run that couple of miles in the morning if, if you had to. Um, and other ways of your well-being and your, your mental health, how do you de-stress after long days? And the question to Stephen as well. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Angela. I just set up my uh, furlough hot tub at the weekend. So I'll be in there tonight <laughs> and with a nice can of IPA, a little bit of music on Alexa in the background. And the knees don't take it anymore, but I've got the running machine at home, so I do walking and that, a bit of striding. And uh, we walk the beaches along the Kent coast with our little dog, me and the wife. So just get some headspace, switch off, you know. Somebody said to me before, Colin, I, I can't get you at six o'clock at night on your phone. I said, you won't. Uh, I'll be in at seven in the morning, though. And that's just uh, been employed since 1983. I've learned the hard way that it does affect us, as we know. Uh, we need headspace. Uh, we have to take time for ourselves to, to give ourselves room to decompress. No different what military people will be used to decompressing. After ops, it's no different out here. You don't want to keep pleasing people too much all the time. Otherwise, it, it plays tricks, you know. Uh, and I bump into lots of them here. I'm not a mental health first aider myself but I have experienced things in the past so I 
they don't need to know that, but I can see the signs and symptoms and I generally just do the right thing and look after them, signpost them. No, that's good for you, Colin. Sorry. I was going to say, yeah, we have, um, you know, I mentioned earlier, we've, we've sort of, at last count, we've got something like 50 employees that have come from that, that forces background. Um, and that's headed up by a chap called Stephen Law that's been in our business for a few years. And he is a, a, a trained mental health first aider. And several of those people that have come from that background are. So we've got a, one of the things that we, we are very comfortable and confident doing is making sure that if somebody is struggling, because that you've got people there that you can talk to that have, have lived that crazy life that you've lived in the forces and, and, and understand that language, you know, that I might not be able to understand as well, having not come from that background. So we've definitely made sure that we that, that community is is supported and they've got someone to talk to. Um, um, but hopefully, it, you know, hopefully they are able to, we're not giving them such a hard time during the, the normal hours that they're, they're having a dreadful time in the evenings because they can't switch off. But, you know, if they need help, we can provide that. And we've got the, as, as I'm sure Keir has got a, an employee assistance programme as well. Um, so we have got lots of places that we can signpost people to. And it's a great point, Philippa, <laughs> that a company is mindful of its culture and looking after its, its employees. And what do you do, Stephen, to de-stress? Um, I'm still learning about that part of it. It's, <laughs> it's, it is a trap, and, and Colin alluded to it. We are uh, in the military, you, you, you keep going until the job's done, you spend weeks away from home etc and now managing my nine to five is is not quite nine to five like Colin alluded to it's uh shutting the door and I'm very good I'm a bit I think autistic I think I'm on the autistic side I can compartmentalize things and like Colin not so much at six o'clock at night but times when I do have free times I'll make sure it, it is a free time I've got a very good support network through the team and colleagues that I work with and my boss tells me off if my phone's on when I'm supposed to be off. So we, it's, it's it's getting in, into that habit. But I, I just go for walks now. Fitness-wise, um, I was a big squash player. Uh, my body, like Colin's, is, uh, doesn't agree with that now. So I tend to walk a lot with my job. And I walk on the evenings when I get back with my dogs. Um, I've got grandchildren now, so they're big focus. And that's one of the reasons why I left the military. My kids started breeding, so I wanted to be part of their life because I wasn't always part of my children's life. So you, 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 your focus changed, and that, for me, is is a big part of my well-being. Personally, I'm still learning to look after myself, as Colin probably is. Um, I should practice what I preach, really. Where 2018, I got sponsored by the National Lottery to do the Mental Health First Aid Instructors course. So I went along, did that with Mental Health First Aid England because Kim um, and Philippa alluded to, to look after our guys and girls in, in the business. They work long hours. They work very, very hard. They are getting thrashed. It's difficult to turn the phone off. They've got a project. They're just thinking about it constantly. You can see people changing over a period of time. So I decided to, to do this and ended up teaching it to, to some of our um, colleagues. I must have taught 50, 60 people over the last, uh, not last year, but the previous couple of years. It's very, very rewarding. But in, in, they're very good at looking after other people. They're very good at looking after um, left and right. Not every single case, but well-being is also, which is slightly different from, from mental health, is something we're having a big focus on. And let's not forget this week is Mental Health Awareness Week. So, um, we're having a, a focus on that and just trying to get people to, to look after themselves. The last 12 months of COVID and the government restrictions, you know, wherever side you sit, it's, it's actually hurting us all in many ways. So now we're coming out of that. What's been created, getting people confident to come back into the workplace. It's all about well-being and making people should make make people aware that they should start looking after themselves now. Um, and, and that's the challenges we face. And I'm sure it's the challenges Colin places as well we haven't stopped over the last 12 months there's, there's been very few furloughs um in the health and safety aspect and construction aspect i'm sure colin colin's the same so there's, there's different challenges people now coming back people that are overworked shall we say um so i should practice what i preach and relax more angela to answer your question 
Okay, no, thank you for that. Thank you. And Kim, you mentioned um, this military support network that, that you've set up. Um, are you seeing the ex-military progress throughout your company? Are you seeing them getting into senior positions and to board level? Yeah, we are. And um, we have got a, a member that's very senior and high up in our infrastructure business that was in the forces. And he was, I actually don't know if they've done the award yet, but he was nominated and shortlisted um, for a role model award for his kind of experience with Keir and, and what he does in the forces. And you know, as a business, we have got quite a significant number of people that have got a military background in one way or another, or are a reservist at the moment. And, you know, what we want to do is support those people to move through, because as both kind of Colin and Stephen has said before, the leadership skills are going to be absolutely incredible from this population. And whatever we can do to kind of nurture that and support that is something that we would like to do. So we, we are seeing that there is an increase and part of this network that we've set up with colleagues coming forward and kind of sharing their stories and telling us about what it is that they do and their background in the force is one of the things that we want to be able to see from that as well as that kind of cross business working so it's not just you know key construction on there it's it's key highways it's key utilities and to be able to share that kind of resource and knowledge across those business areas and actually think about you know where people might be able to develop where people might be able to move a different into a different business unit if an opportunity arises for them um, and take their skills and experience through to that as well so it's it's been really nice to be able to share those stories and share that network with those people. No, that's fantastic. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, to those listening, there is a huge appetite in industry for you to transition into health and safety roles. The employers are willing you through the ranks to progress into a fantastic career. And as Stephen said in his speech, I didn't realise how good we are. And I think that's a great way to close. So thank you to our four speakers. I think that was an incredible session today. And again, thank you for the nod to um, Mental Health Week as well. So it was great to be able to discuss that. I'll pass back, to, we have overrun by a few minutes. So I'll pass back to Caroline just to close and to discuss our, our next session as well. So uh, thank you, everyone. That was brilliant. I have to say, I do love a bit of male competition. Pauling, Colin pulling it out the bag when he saw the pressure was on that Keir were doing the presentation. <laughs> So well done, that did really tickle me this morning. I'm quite <laughs> expecting your slide. Um, but brilliant, brilliant speakers. And thanks, um, Recruitment, for joining us as well, because it really does add value. And um, so all of those listening now and, and, and later, you know, if you're not in touch with Bill Force, please do get in touch. We've got other partners that are as fantastic as Keir and, and Clancy, just willing to help you, support you, whether it be mentoring, work placements, and of course, job opportunities. Um, so I have failed this morning because I forgot to check our agenda. But I, I'm, I think next week is uh, the 20th. No, it is. It's our Labour resource um hs2 you're nodding angela i'm right mm -hmm. good it's our labor resource um career chat for hs2 so that will be more about boots on the ground um uh, you know ground um plant engineers um but it really will be the workforce uh, rather than management roles so great event i will be pushing that out on social media as well so thank you all the sun is coming out before the rain so enjoy the rest of your day and and take care of yourselves thank you thank you everyone bye take care. bye bye